five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you guys for coming here today. Uh, Mr. Ballard, thank you for your service. My family and I also saw the movie. Um, pretty, uh, pretty tough movie to watch. Uh, Mr. Ballard, are you aware that this, is, uh, this week marks the 22nd an anniversary of 9-11 uh, attacks? Yes, I do. Looking back at that event, sir, um, do you come to the same conclusion that I, that I do, that it, it almost seems as if we haven't learned a thing in this country? I do. Isn't it true, sir, that some of these uh, trafficking networks that the cartels operate, they don't just traffic little kids, but they also will traffic individuals on the terror watch list into the country? Absolutely, we know that to be true. Yeah, the last numbers I was looking at showed that within the last couple of years, 241 have been encountered. And that doesn't include the uh, Godaways, does it, sir? That's absolutely right. Muhammad Atta himself staged in Mexicali, Mexico, and crossed into the United States that way. Do you think it's possible that of the uh, estimated 1.5 million Godaways that any of the individuals on that watch list or that might be on the terror watch list might uh, conduct another attack like we saw on 9-11? Absolutely. Thank you. Ms. Canto, thank you so much for being here today. I wanted to tell you personally, thank you so much for your, your courage, your dedication to your family, and to the Border Patrol. And I wanna say something, ma'am, I've been in this, I'm a, I'm a freshman here in con Congress, I've only been here for eight months, but rarely do I see a witness that has the courage to actually confront a member of Congress and tell them what's what. So thank you for doing that today. It really bothers me when I see um, all the, the politics going on, and I know you've seen it today, haven't you, ma'am? I know you've seen today why we're in this situation where our kids are dying of fentanyl. Uh, we have members on the terror watch list coming through our southern border. Um, and our country is, quite frankly, being overrun. You know, it's, it's sad because uh, when you, no offense to the witness uh, from the other side, but clearly they brought this witness in to talk about policies of the past. They didn't bring him in here to talk about what's going on today, did they? Mr. Ballard, did you no notice that as well? I did notice that. Why do you think that is, sir? <clears throat> it seems to me uh, a bit of a distraction. Um, uh, not that we shouldn't talk about family separation, but, uh, but we're, we're here to talk about this problem right now, right before us. And it's devastating. And I think it, it, some of this might've been used as a distraction to not get the, the, these, these bigger points across. Yeah, well, on that note of family separation, do you think it's a little ironic that there's only a focus on family separation under the last administration? I do, because there's a point that hasn't been made about that. How come these families, look, I believe some of those families absolutely were separated wrong, wrongfully. But however, if the, if the parents aren't coming back to get those kids, how do you know that they weren't fake families that were separated? I mean, and, yeah. I mean, we know there's cases where there were real families. I'm not saying there's not, but we don't know the number. How many are fake families and those kids might have been rescued? We have to ask that question. I don't have the answer, but at least let's talk about it. Yeah, and uh, Mr. Galant, on that same, on that same uh, train of thought, it's interesting to me that you just make the assumption that because peop the sponsors aren't answering the phone that you guys don't believe that those are, these 85,000 kids are really missing. Right, well, that, that's based on, you know, you, talking to people in years of working in this area that sponsors generally do not like to answer the phone from a government agency or do not know who's calling, but our belief is that these are not children who are lost. And there are background checks. The Biden administration does, notwithstanding what, what's been said here today, the Biden administration does do background checks. If there have been shortcuts taken at any point, those need to be fixed, and I, and I believe that the, the agency is looking into that. Obviously, Thank we you. don't want to give... I, I take back my time. Thank you, sir. Uh, my colleague from New York, uh, before he left the room, uh, he made a couple claims. He said, can the Biden administration hire uh, more immigration judges? Can they print more money to hire more Border Patrol agents? He was clearly trying to take um, responsibility off of this administration. And then he said, we, it's because we have no, Republicans have no interest in actually solving the problems, which is ironic. 
Um, and then he actually brought up uh, something that he constantly talks about, about where these, the mass majo vast majority of the weapons that the cartels are using is coming from. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for you. Has my colleague from New York ever presented the data um, to this committee to back up this claim? I, I'm so the sorry, rest I, of us can see it? I was having a conversation, a sidebar. I missed the question. Okay. Well, I'd like to know if, if he's ever, uh, if my colleague from New York has ever I think you can ask him, presented uh, data. but uh, we can check. Okay. Um, but I don't, I don't know the question, so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back my time. Gentlemen, yield.